the rise of the 70s Caribbean Black Power Movement, from the greater to the lesser Antilles, Caribbean women's issues were propelled into the spotlight. Caribbean women were often overlooked regarding their economic and political concerns. As Malcolm X rightly said, the most disrespected woman is the Respected person is the black woman. Say it with me guys, black woman. That held true for the Caribbean as well. In light of this, we see the rise of Caribbean women taking on the patriarchal society that surrounded them. In the Caribbean, the feminist movement of the 1970s intersected with post-independence discourse, primarily focusing on the issues of race and class within the context of the Creole or the black or white or, at that time, colored populations. The dominant discourse within Caribbean feminism has been pretty Afrocentric, with a focus on the experiences and interests of African women, meaning we are of African heritage, reflecting the historical legacy of African slavery and colonialism. From an intersectional approach, the Afrocentric perspective has led to the neglect of other experiences of non-African women within the Caribbean, including that of Indian women, Chinese and indigenous populations, and I would even dare say of white women who were born within the Caribbean. The feminist movement in the Caribbean emerged from nationalist struggles and left political movements leading to the formation of a black socialist feminist perspective. Over time, the movement expanded to include women from different class backgrounds, leading to internal debates and divisions related to class interests. In other words, the bourgeoisie versus the poor man or bourgeoisie caribbean women versus middle class and poorer caribbean women everyone had different interests at the time while the movement is often perceived as middle class and urban it overlooks the rapid social mobility experienced by many caribbean women particularly through education the resurgence of the Caribbean women's movement in the late 1960s and early 1970s brought about significant changes in Caribbean women's struggles, touching various aspects of personal and political life. Traditional women's organizations from the 1950s era were influenced by this new consciousness, leading to the formation of regional bodies like CARIWA, Caribbean Women's Association in Guyana. In Guyana and Jamaica, feminist-oriented groups within political parties advocated for the establishment of national groups focused on women's affairs, which resulted in the creation of the Council on the Affairs and Status of women in Guyana and the Women's Bureau in Jamaica. These efforts culminated in regional structures like the Women and Development U Unit, one, at the University of the West Indies and the Women's Desk at the CARICOM Secretariat, which promoted women's rights and empowerment throughout the Caribbean. Nonetheless, the Caribbean's women's movement faced significant challenges during the late 20th century economic crises. Remember, I stated earlier, things were changing globally, which impacted the Caribbean. Leading, so all of this economic crisis led to a restructuring of the international capitalist system. Monetary policies were implemented and Caribbean nations were forced to adopt structural adjustment policies resulting in the exploitation of female labor. These policies led to ideological, political and human rights crises affecting women and minorities. 
historical colonial exploitation and structural inequalities exacerbated these crises leading to issues like famine militarism and ethnic tensions jamaica faced economic destabilization for example due to the socialist policies while another example trinidad and tobago experienced an artificial prosperity during the oil boom of the 1970s but also underwent structural adjustment under the imf guidance following a shift to a center-right government in 1986. caribbean women in response resisted these imf policies for instance in jamaica the people's national party pnp government responded to women's demands after those women protested by implementing progressive social programs and legislation including employment initiatives and improved child care facilities go jamaican women however worsening economic and social conditions led to imf negotiations resulting in cutbacks and layoffs that affected women again disproportionately in response the pnp women's movement collaborated with other organizations to form the joint committee for women's rights jcwr these entities campaigned for viable alternatives to the IMF, with one of their first successes being the enactment of a maternity leave law in 1979, providing paid leave for working women, as it should. Conclusively, in my humble opinion, <laughs> The excellence of the Caribbean region lies within the countless Caribbean women whose contributions have gone unnoticed. Considering Caribbean women's contributions in the 70s, I would like to mention some of my personal favorite Caribbean women. Firstly, the Honorable Dame Eugenia Charles of Dominica, who served Dominica in the capacity of opposition leader in 1975. Secondly, we have Miss Lewis Bennett Coverley, or Miss Lou of Jamaica, who was a poet, a folklorist, a performer, an educator, and an activist who was called to the most excellent order of Jamaica in 1974. Another favorite of mine is Calypso Rose of Trinidad and Tobago. And if you do not know her from her previous work, you may know her from her recent work with Marshall Montano. She has been featured in a couple of his songs, so go check her out. She held the title of Calypso Queen from 1972 to 1976 and became the first woman to win Road March in 1977 with Gimme More Tempo. And she repeated that feat in 1978 with Comle We Jam. And fourthly, my fourth favorite, and she has been a favorite of mine for a long time now, is Susan L. Taylor. And you should know that name if you're a, someone who's from the Caribbean and also lives in America. She is a writer, editor, and journalist, and a long standing editor in chief of Essence magazine. And she is Trinidadian American. She was employed by Essence as a freelance fashion and beauty editor in 1970. Cheers to these women and the countless other Caribbean women who have and continue to be the blueprint. Cheers to you and blessings. Like on the gram, let me tell you about real woman.